Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Third Order Intercept with Rodian Schwartz FPC. In this short presentation, we'll guide you through making third order intercept measurements using a Rodian Schwartz FPC series spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a familiarity with basic spectrum analyzer operation and an understanding of third order intercept. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentations Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation, and or Understanding Third Order Intercept before beginning this presentation. On the FPC, third order intercept measurements are called third order intermod. To access this measurement, first press the Measure Hard key, then press Measurement Mode and select Third Order Intermod. Here we see the main third order intermod screen. As you should recall, this measurement involves sending two tones, F1 and F2, into the device under test. The two adjacent third order products, 2F1 minus F2 and 2F2 minus F1, are produced by the nonlinearity of the device under test. By calculating the difference in power between the input tones and the third order products, we can use a simple equation to calculate third order intercept or IP3. The FPC does this automatically by placing four markers, two on the fundamentals and two on the detected third order products, and then calculating the third order intercept. Let's look at the configuration of a third order intermod measurement. In order to make an IP3 measurement, we need to set the center and span such that our two tones and adjacent third order products are visible on the screen. Choosing a smaller resolution bandwidth is helpful, especially when the third order products are very close to the noise floor. It's also usually a good idea to choose max peak as the detector type. The FPC will do its best to find the two tones and third order products automatically, but you can use search signals to have the instrument search again, or manually set or adjust the markers if needed. Remember that we can use input attenuation to determine if the intermodulation products are being created by the dot or within the analyzer. We add attenuation typically on the order of 10 dB, and observe the measured distortion level. If third order intercept changes after attenuation is added, the products are being generated in the analyzer. If third order intercept doesn't change, then the products are being generated externally. Let's look at an example on the FPC. If our input attenuation is 0 dB, our measured third order intercept is 6.5 dBm. When we increase input attenuation to 10 dB, our measured third order intercept does not change. This indicates that the intermodulation distortion we're measuring is coming from the device under test, not being created within our analyzer. Let's end with a short summary. Third order intercept, or IP3 measurements, require two CW signals or tones from independent signal sources. These tones combine in the device under test and third order intercept is calculated using the level of the two input tones and the levels of the adjacent third order products. The FPC does this measurement automatically by setting four markers, two on the fundamentals and two on the third order products and performing the calculation. In some cases, we may need to manually adjust the markers. Finally, we can change the level of input attenuation to determine if the measured intermodulation distortion is coming from the device under test or from the analyzer itself. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Third Order Intercept with the Rodian Schwartz FPC. If you'd like to learn more about third order intercept or making third order intercept measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.